The space industry is the best proof that to make something great, you don't need billions of taxpayers' money. You can develop an efficient and powerful rocket for a fraction of that cost, just like SpaceX did. It's also a reminder that throwing billions at a project doesn't automatically make it great. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is a perfect example of this. They have been developing this rocket for over a decade, and despite spending more than $23.8 billion, it has only flown once. Now, after all this time and an enormous amount of money spent, there are serious rumors that the entire SLS program could be canceled. In today's video, we will break down why this might happen and what it means for the future of space exploration. Before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future space news. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, was first conceived in 2011 as part of NASA's long-term plan to return humans to the moon and eventually send astronauts to Mars. The idea was to create a super heavy lift rocket capable of launching crewed missions beyond low Earth orbit, something NASA hadn't done since the Apollo era. The SLS was initially supposed to launch by 2017, but the project quickly fell behind schedule due to technical challenges, budget overruns, and bureaucratic inefficiencies. Year after year, the program faced delays, with NASA continuously pushing back the launch date. It wasn't until November 16th, 2022, five years after the original deadline, that SLS finally launched for the first time on the Artemis Y mission. By the time of that first launch, the cost of developing SLS had ballooned to a staggering $23.8 billion. This enormous price tag made it one of the most expensive rocket programs in history. One of the biggest reasons for the high cost is that SLS isn't being built by a single company. Unlike SpaceX, which develops its rockets in-house, SLS is the result of multiple government contracts spread across a network of aerospace companies. Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Aerojet Rocketdyne, and many other contractors are each responsible for different components of the rocket. While this system was intended to distribute jobs across multiple states and industries, it also led to inefficiencies. Different companies working on separate parts of the rocket meant slower integration, increased costs, and significant coordination challenges. Another factor driving up costs is that SLS is completely expendable. Every time it launches, the entire rocket is discarded, meaning a new one has to be built for every single mission. Unlike SpaceX's Falcon 9 or Starship, which are designed to be reused multiple times, SLS follows the same approach as the old Apollo-era Saturn V, making it a much more expensive system in the long run. But cost isn't the only problem. SLS has also faced numerous technical issues. For years, engineers struggled with problems related to the rocket's core stage, particularly its complex propulsion system, which is powered by four RS-25 engines, engines originally designed for the space shuttle. While these engines were highly advanced, they were not designed to be discarded after a single use, making them an expensive choice for a non-reusable rocket. Now, what's making everyone working on this program nervous is that Boeing, the primary contractor responsible for building SLS, has made a sudden and urgent announcement about the rocket's future. In an unexpected meeting, Boeing gathered around 800 employees working on the SLS project and told them that the program's future was at serious risk. Boeing's vice president and SLS program manager, David Dutcher, stated that the company's contract for the rocket might end as early as March. While nothing has been officially confirmed yet, Boeing is preparing for the possibility that NASA will not renew its agreements for future SLS missions. If this happens, Boeing will be forced to lay off a large number of workers and the company has already confirmed that around 400 jobs will be cut by April. The main reason Boeing is making this announcement now is likely due to the upcoming U.S. government budget proposal for the next fiscal year. This proposal will determine NASA's funding, and if it recommends cutting SLS, that would be a clear indication that the program is on its way out. While NASA officials have been debating whether to keep SLS running for at least two more missions, Artemis II and Artemis III, before shutting it down, 
there is growing pressure from critics who argue that continuing to fund SLS is a waste of money when private companies are developing more efficient and cost-effective alternatives. Every time NASA launches an SLS rocket, it costs more than $2 billion. And that's just for the rocket itself. That number doesn't even include the additional costs for ground operations, mission planning, and the spacecraft it carries, such as the Orion crew capsule. This extreme cost has raised serious concerns about whether the program is financially sustainable. To put this into perspective, with $2 billion, SpaceX could launch at least 40 Falcon 9 rockets or around 10 Falcon Heavy launches, both of which are proven and reliable launch systems. While the SLS is designed as a heavy-lift rocket, so is Falcon Heavy, yet the difference in cost between them is staggering. Let's compare the SLS with Falcon Heavy, SpaceX's closest alternative. The SLS in its Block 1 configuration produces 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at launch, making it the most powerful rocket NASA has built since the Saturn V. However, it is completely expendable, meaning every single launch requires an entirely new rocket to be built from scratch. In contrast, Falcon Heavy, which generates 5.1 million pounds of thrust, can be launched for just $150 million per flight. That's almost 14 times cheaper than SLS while still delivering around 65% of its power. More importantly, Falcon Heavy is partially reusable. Its two side boosters return to Earth and land for reuse, which dramatically reduces costs over time. In contrast, the SLS's boosters, Core Stage, and RS-25 engines are all discarded after each launch, meaning that every flight of the SLS is essentially burning billions of dollars with no return on investment. Even the RS-25 engines, originally built for the space shuttle and intended for multiple flights, are now being used once and then thrown away. This makes the SLS incredibly inefficient compared to modern rockets. And when we think about how Starship is also being developed at an impressive speed, there is even less reason for NASA to continue funding SLS. Starship, SpaceX's next-generation launch vehicle, is entirely reusable, meaning both the booster and the upper stage can be flown multiple times. This dramatically reduces the cost per launch to an estimated $10 million to $20 million per flight, a tiny fraction of SLS's $2 billion. Starship is also significantly larger and more powerful than SLS. While SLS Block 1 generates 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, Starship with its super-heavy booster will produce nearly 16.7 million pounds of thrust, making it almost twice as powerful as SLS. It also has a far greater payload capacity, capable of carrying 100 to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, compared to SLS Block 1's 95 metric tons. In its future, Block 2 configuration, SLS may reach 130 metric tons, but that will take years and billions more dollars to develop. Meanwhile, SpaceX is already planning full-scale Moon and Mars missions using Starship in the near future. Another major advantage of Starship is its versatility. It is being designed not just for deep space missions, but also for commercial satellite launches, space station resupply, lunar landings, and even Mars colonization. NASA has already selected a modified version of Starship as the lunar lander for the Artemis program, meaning that astronauts will already be using Starship to land on the moon. This raises a crucial question. If NASA trusts Starship for landing astronauts on the moon, why continue funding SLS when it is significantly more expensive and offers far less capability? SpaceX is also rapidly iterating on Starship's design. Unlike SLS, which took more than a decade and over $20 billion just to launch once, SpaceX is launching Starship prototypes multiple times per year, learning from each test and improving the rocket at a rapid pace. If this development continues, Starship could surpass SLS in both capability and reliability within just a few years. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more space news. See you in the next one.